Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Brawl Masters Arena. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday so far. Allow me to make it even better as we are kicking off the first match of the night. Brutus the Barbarian and the Korean Idol, the Extreme Fighter, Jake In Young, going head to head in our opening match up here. Just one week away now from the season four finale, the Breakthrough Premium Show. So most excited to be looking. Brutus the Barbarian already making into the card. He's going to be facing off against Wolf Anderson after the two have recently been, been getting into a bit of beef between one, one another. Well, Wolf, the, Wolf the, the situation started out to do a miscalculation on our referee's part, unable to see a rope break a lot that resulted in Wolf Anderson losing a match to Brutus the Barbarian. However, in a rematch last last Thursday, Wolf. Well, he had the opportunity, but unfortunately, Brutus the Barbarian was just on a whole another le level compared to Wolf that night. I mean, the man got absolutely demolished. Let's see how, how well Jakin is going to be doing facing off as, as, as the season one veteran. But Jakin also a pretty pretty seasoned. Warrior at this point into the Pro Masters and now gonna be going into the cover as well. Here we have one and a two and a kick out. Brutus the Barbarian kicks out. Yeah, it's definitely power uh, versus style here tonight. But both extremely uh, brutal. Uh, definitely people who would be willing to go for extreme rules. Definitely try to bend the rules as much as possible. Borderline at least as much as possible, I, uh, reasonably possible, at least try to avoid a disqualification. Then again, Brutus, I, I don't know if, if if someone flips that switch inside his head. If he decides to go full on extreme, then he there's no stopping him. And he's not going to be caring about the disqualification. Checking, giving the crowd what they want. Keeping the barbarian down here, meanwhile the referee counting up. Send, send, sending the man straight into the steel steps there. Not a, not a happy collision at all. As the Korean Idol full on dictating the pacing of this fight. Lifting up German suplex. Snap German suplex at that. After a seven count. Jaking. Representing the rhythm and some blue, rhythm and Blues. Gets back inside the ring. Here comes Brutus the Barbarian. Able to get a kick in and lifting up, taking into a very poor position, drops down with the snake eyes. Boot now going for a choking. Straight to the chest, the stomp, stomp as well, gonna be cutting off that flow of oxygen real quick. Brutus trying, trying to keep taking down, picks him up though, kick up and to DDT. Planting straight into the uh, ring here. Lift locked up here, power bomb, and that brutal power bomb combo about to initiate here. We have one, we have two, and one more time, just absolutely dominating strength that Brutus is once again showcasing. Not done yet, gonna be finishing this up with a one-two blow. Well, I suppose one, two, three, four blow. The dominator, and now into the cover, and three. Brutus the barbarian picks up a victory in our opening match up here. Yeah. Jakey did real well, but unfortunately getting caught up in that brutal power bomb combo. It's gonna be wreaking havoc to your back, and it's gonna be wondering if you're gonna be getting back up at all after that. Yeah, just look at this monstrous power, unnatural almost, and then a dominator to follow that up. Yeah, there was no way Jakey gonna be getting out of that. Here is your winner, Brutus. Barbarian. And Brutus keeps on picking up momentum. Speaking of pe picking up momentum, Wolf Anderson coming in here, stopping the celebration short. Yeah, you can. The heated up uh, situation between these men is only started. Sin breaker from Wolf. Yeah, I was about to say that uh, at this rate, Brutus will be completely untested going, going into the breakthrough, but Wolf about to put the brakes on here. Takes down Brutus. Picks him up again and now sufficiently stunned, gonna be locking him up. Pump handle brings around, beautiful driver. Textbook really, that, like that's just 
technical wrestling at its finest. Oh, Brutus did not like that. He's drop kicking Wolf down and about to take the control back to his side. So case involved. Why not to mess with him lifting up? Brutal power here as military press slammed straight to the ring. Club, no, Wolf countering. Yeah, Wolf definitely has the speed advantage. Snapmare takedown, I believe that was enough to put a breakdown on Brutus. Yeah, talk about a very interesting situation once again. Welcome to tonight's episode of the Brawl Masters. Once again, just one week away from the Breakthrough Premium Show. What is going to be the Season 4 finale, putting an end to Season 4. And we, we will talk about what's going to come after, after that in that Premium Show. But let's talk a bit about what's going to be happening on tonight. Coming up right after this, we're going to be having our women's number one contender match for the women's rated R title. This is gonna be a six woman knockout elimination match. So all these six women they wanted to take part in this, all of them wanting to go after Black Rose Julia's title. Only one of them will be left standing here tonight. Which one it will be, we'll find out soon enough. Then coming up later up in the show tonight, we have the men's martial arts championship title match. Green Cyclone is casting in his title opportunity he won last week and going, go, going up against Marshall David as the champion has dictated champ, champion's defense right. The submission match is going to be happening on tonight. Right after that we have a another number one contender match. Yeah, we have a no lot of number one contender matches here to determine the next week's premium show. We have the Men's Wrestling Alliance titles challenger position available tonight taking part the Queens versus the Olympia Legends, both Jackie Jackson and Judy by Cook, as well as Punk Hercules and Spartacus, have earned themselves this kind of position. And tonight we'll find out who will face off against Cooper's crew in the breakthrough. And coming up in our main event of tonight, a number one contender tables, ladders, and chairs match. Women's Wrestling Alliance uh, uh, Championship title opportunity available. Too cool has to defend their current position, which they which they won after defeating the new foundation. But the champions decided that no, they don't want to fight against Too Cool just because of that. They want themselves to prove, and so they they have called in or they have put forward the name of the natural disasters, Matt Doc Whitney and Riley the Nightmare, who now stand at an immense opportunity to earn themselves. A chance at the Women's Wrestling Alliance title. Coming to you from Helsinki, Finland. I am your host, Kubari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. Rated R title was made just for her, 
Now she has the, the opportunity to prove just that. An extremely brutal matchup of Africa men's a six woman knockout elimination. We'll get to the rules as soon as the match starts. So, uh, plenty of people, I, I would say that all, all of them are most looking forward to this. And that, uh, that kind of speaks about the mentality of the people taking part for, in the, for the rated R title. These are fighting in a whole another level and they want to fight on a whole another level at that. And representing Pretty Mean Sisters from Barcelona, Spain, Isabella Garcia. Let's see how, how the Garcia sisters are going to be pairing off tonight. Gloria Garcia previously failed to attain a position in the women's martial arts championship title opportunity, but now Isabella looking to earn her opportunity with the title, but her ticket into the breakthrough by winning this matchup and getting a match against Black Rose Julia. Only more people though hungry for that opportunity as well as we have the next contender here coming up. Very mixed reactions from the crowd here. And representing the anarchist from Neo Osaka, Quinn Raiden. Yeah, Quinn Raiden, one half of the previous women's wrestling alliance champions. Her par current partner, Sweet Marie, still holding on to that women's internet title cha championship belt. Been hoping, hoping to prove herself a worthy partner to her. I'm gonna be trying to earn the, uh, the opportunity here tonight. Yeah, everyone is on, uh, on about this opportunity. I mean, every last one of these women want that title and they're willing to go through hell to earn just that. Speaking of going through hell, and well. From Asgard, Burn the White Ray! Yeah, I suppose yeah, after having witnessed Afterlife, Bert the Valkyrie would very much consider me back in the world of the living to be hell. Nonetheless, no, he's taking, taking it for all its worth, taking it into these fights here in the series. Partnering up usually with Wolf Anderson, but tonight fight, fighting on her own. Wolf, of course, is busy with the situation. Going around with Brutus the Barbarian, so Bert, Bert has to keep herself busy. And I guess he, do, he does not need Wolf to be dictating what she's doing here. She's on, on this on herself. There's a woman who's been lately getting very much attention from Bert the Valkyrie, mostly due to mixed gender tag teaming between these two teams, Vicious and Delicious and the Viking Warriors. And representing Vicious and Delicious from Transylvania, Romania, Christina Van Mortis. Now, Christina Van Mortis is a previous title holder in this similar kind of setting. She was during the season 2 an extreme uh, fighting champion. Rated R championships, pretty much the same deal, same old ordeal. So she's gonna be real looking forward to this opportunity. Of course, we fight or five other people in the ring tonight. That means that's basically a buffet for her. But or not she's gonna be actually going down and snacking on everyone, we'll have to see. She does look real energized, well, just as rejuvenated as she ever is, but still. That vampire is definitely... Lady Christina Van Moore is definitely commanding respect. 
<laughs> you don't wanna get on her bad side unless you wanna end up as her dinner. No, I'm not talking about dinner date, I'm actually meeting a full-on dinner course. Alright, let's see if the last contender entering this match. And representing too cool from the land of the rising sun, the samurai Katsuyori Elizabeth. Katsuyori Elizabeth hoping to once again, yeah, she's also a previous extreme fighting champion. So gonna be hoping to get back into the grind, hoping to get back to the top of the division. And not, not just that, but representing that co too cool a group led by Snow Princess Yuri, who will be tag teaming tonight, trying to defend their number one contender position against the natural disasters. Af after the champions decided, the current reigning champions decided that they do not want to give the title opportunity just because they happen to win one match in a free on free situation. We'll talk about more about that later on. But now Katsuyori Elizabeth. Hoping to get some, get an opportunity to earn some gold in honor of the Snow Princess. Let's see how that will be going as we kick off the match. So yeah, six woman knockout elimination. No pinfalls, no submissions, no disqualifications, no countouts. The only way to uh, win this match is by being the last woman standing. You have to out outlast everyone else. Who, who will be eventually knocked out. E e once you get knocked out, you're eliminated and you have to exit the ring. One way or another, however that may be. So, absolutely a brutal matchup and absolutely definitely something that fits into the... You know, the perspective, the reasoning of the Reddit R title. Of course, the, underneath the ring we have a stack load of weapons included. Whether or not they, they want to go for them. Where it remains to be seen, but the option is there, and it's completely leg legal to go for them. Here we have a tiger suplex from Katsuyori Elizabeth Bird already rolling to cover, and so is Isabella Garcia, both of them deciding that they want out. Queen ha had no choice getting out as Debra Klein has chosen her as her opponent here, and Christina Van Mord is left all alone with Katsuyori and Elizabeth, uh, the two have plenty of history between one another, really clashing up against one another during the second season for that Extreme Fighting Championship title. They know each other's styles and they know what it takes to take each other out. We're gonna be remaining to see who's gonna get the upper hand here tonight. Bird was just enjoying the fight in the ring, but Isabella Garcia coming from behind. Yeah, reminding her that this is actually a six-woman match and not, not just a one-on-one. -on -one. Here we have the last pair exiting as well, and uh, yeah, talk about the knockouts, they, they can happen anywhere uh, in the arena here, so they don't have to take place inside the ring, they can actually, well obviously if you get knocked out outside of the ring, that's gonna be that. And ringside definitely gonna be the place to be fighting, Katsuyori sent back inside by Christina, and now Bird scraping the face of Isabella, meanwhile Debra Klein. Season 4 deputy brawler, definitely taking it to Queen Raiden. She started to get up and go back up. Oh, and Christina going for the midnight second at biting onto the neck of Katsuyori Elizabeth. I wonder if that uh, that's cool, like, you know, getting up repressing. You know, getting like a, a, a slushy. I don't know, I doubt that. Despite all that gold team there, she's still just a regular old human lifted up now. No, able to avoid being lifted up into a shoulder carry. Taking down, sleeper mat slam. Katsuyori Elizabeth turning things around even though she just got sucked. And by that I mean getting suck, uh, blood sucked out of her. Not, not, nothing else, you freaks. DDT planted by Christina. Meanwhile on the ringside, Bert the Valkyrie. Oh wait, on the ring back here we go. Tombstone power driver. Not, was not enough to knock out Katsuyori Elizabeth and that, that's saying a lot. Bert the Valkyrie here coming inside the ring. After taking it to... Isabella Garcia, who's now getting back inside as well. Sending Isabella into the corner, turning her around. Christina with a devastating elbow. And meanwhile, Queen and Debra look like they're gonna be taking this fight to the aisle, closer to the ramp. The most dangerous place in this arena to be fighting right now, as they're fighting on bare concrete. No, nothing to soften up the blows, no, no, nothing to... Absorb the impacts, you get crashed on it, that's gonna be full on, just end of it all. 
situation going on. Best press by Bert the Valkyrie. Punching and clubbing to the face of Isabella Garcia. Debra Klein sent up and Bird about to pick up where Quinn left off. No, Christina gonna, gonna be taking part in this fight. There we have Isabella knocked out there by Quinn Red and didn't see what kind of a move she performed, but was enough to force Isabella out of this competition. Referee calling it a good call, definitely. Unfortunately for the Garcia sisters, they are not gonna be making any gold. I, 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 towards the end of the season four here. Bert the Valkyrie on the top rope looking for that divine hammer strike of four comes in, clubs to the head of Christina Van Mortis. Fortunately, thanks to her unnatural might, she's knocked out, not knocked out of, from there, but Katsuyori Elizabeth about to double team. They were might lifting up, beautiful slam, solid, solid, powerful slam there, and now looking for a Finish off, speaking of finishing off here, Bert the Valkyrie with the wing clipper hold. Katsuyori Elizabeth gets a knee to the top of the head, Quinn Raiden coming in to help Christina out. Or there's a rope break, why is there a rope break? This is supposed to be no disqualification, so... Submissions don't matter either way, so why, why is there a rope break? So I so get this referee up to date with the rules here. Christina Van Morty is going after Bert the Valkyrie again with Aldebra Klein able to escape from the hold of Queen Raiden and able to drop her down with a inverted DDT now looking to finish her off here locks up the head gonna be going for that suplex neck breaker Queen Raiden knocked out well she gets back up to her feet but she, she, she calls it that's enough for her for tonight that's one more contender out of this match Katsuyori Elizabeth has made it back to her feet and back into the fight. Four women remaining, with all of them very eager to get the, the title opportunity here. They present against the ring post another tiger suplex by Katsuyori Elizabeth. Bird now fighting, trying to send Elizabeth against Debra. But just a bit off the target, it seems. Debra with a slap. And now both of them kicking. Oh, Bird taking down Debra as well. And Christina from behind takes out Bird. Lifting her up. Military press now. Look at this power here. This, Yeah, once again, the unnatural might of Christina Van Mortis. Gonna be going for... Gonna be taking a, a little taste here. Throwing out that holy blood of the Valkyrie. Sent into the security barrier by Bird, who's not about to be le le let herself be snacked down here on smashing her against the barrier. And uh, Viva Katsuri Elizabeth on the ringside against Debra Klein, Hurricane Run, and now smashing the hip to the face. Stomps the face to continue that off, and now lining up. Ooh, what a karate chop to the top of the head. Not enough to knock down Debra. Oh, Christina just eliminated. Bert the Valkyrie. Yeah, she is out of the competition. Debra was eliminated by the trump card. The Kiri Fuda driver meeting these two women. Katsuyori Elizabeth and Christina Van Mortis once again fighting each other. Well, essentially for the title, essentially for the rated R championship title, the most extreme title there is. Which one of them will be punching their ticket to break through? Which one of them will be facing off? against Black Rose Julia, we'll find out momentarily now. Katsuyori Elizabeth, no, gets caught, lifted up. Quick thinking there, quick thinking, allowing her to save the situation. Elbow to the face of Christina. Hairpool, mat slam. Comes up, gonna be climbing to the top rope and frog splash from the top. Christina eating up a good amount of damage right there. Gonna go for a springboard attack as well. A leg drop coming across. Yeah, but Christina still holding on as she's, as she's really eating up a whole lot of damage right here. Being kept down as much as possible, trapping the arm there and stomping right onto the hand there. She cannot bear, bear much more of this. I will, well, I don't know. You never know with vampires how much, just how much they, they are able to... Oh, that did it. Clubs to the head. Christina Varmore is knocked out. 
Yeah, good night, sweet lady. So the replays of the absolutely fantastic match. Oh, everyone wanted the opportunity here tonight, but ultimate, ultimately only one of them got there. Here is your winner, the Samurai, Katsuyori Elizabeth. And with that, one more person making it to the breakthrough next week. She'll be facing off against Black Rose Julia for the Women's Rated R title. It'll be a most interesting to see which one of the submission holds, holds will be the tougher one. Will it be the Entwining Rose or the Kirifura Driver? Next up is a men's one-on-one -on -one exhibition fight. Satoru wanting to pick a fight with Kasarian. I do not know why, but Kasarian has accepted it. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, that, that was a new one to me, Satoru the Savior. I I have no idea what, what that was about. This, this is the first time I've heard of the whole thing. Is he trying to rebrand here? Is he trying to market himself as a savior of some kind? I, I do not know. Well, I, I suppose uh, the following match will show, show what the band is all about, but... Or that all, all questions remain unanswered, especially why he would request an exhibition match against Kasarian here. And his opponent from Camelot, weighing in at 235 pounds, Iron Man Kazarian. All right, let's see what Kazarian is gonna be doing. It's gonna be definitely one interesting fight to see at that I don't I don't know whether or not he's actually buying into this Sotoro the savior business I mean I, I assume that he he also heard about this for the first time here I don't even I'm not even sure if he cares H hard to tell from when the man is uh, always wearing that slayer helmet of his well, we will see Satoru definitely looking confident. Well, so is Kasarian. Really relaxed here. I think it is just another fight. Another uh, another run at the mill job. Let's see. It's coming in Springboard. Tornado TDT. And the Savior has already been planted head first into the mat here. Setting Satoru into the corner as Kasarian is taking control. Lifting him up and turning him around. Locked up in the Tree of Woe position. Stop in the chest and now what is he doing? Oh, what a nasty backstabber. Yeah, talk about... Yeah, that, that's some disrespect right there. Kazarian going for the cover one and kick out by Satoru. Yeah, talk about disrespect considering backstabber is Satoru's uh, signature maneuver. So, Kazarian going for that. He, he came here with full intention to uh, humiliate his opponent tonight for whatever reason coming coming around with the rolling punts picks up the savior once again gets caught no able to avoid that coming in inverted ddt solid reversal there and definitely quick thinking dropping the fist by jumping right on it or jumping to the face another one jumping fist drops 
constantly hitting Satoru to the face or the face mask at that. Another rolling punch there and now hooky up the leg. And I think I just saw splatters of blood. I don't, I don't know what that was about or how that was about. Satoru getting the arm stomped and now lining up. Oh, what a powerful punch. Satoru now summoning that shadow magic, taking the opportunity. Yeah, loose inside of him and definitely allowing the savior here to turn things around. Goes for the shoulder breaker. Dropping the Kasari right onto his knee. Oh, beautiful snap German suplex there. Turning all that momentum that Kasarian had against him. Trying to keep the man down and locked up, sending him over the top rope. Missing the punch, but able to get sold. Slings on that outside with the neck breaker and now challenging the man to face off against him. Stepping outside for some reason and Kasarian showcasing a good amount of power here. Like, look at the size of Sasoru. Slamming the power bomb right against the apron and brings down another slam as well. Yeah, look at the size of Satoru, and then look at the muscles of Kazari, and he's definitely be maxing out his strength stats, I don't, I don't know. Coming about, oh, there we go, hitting perfectly with the pulverizer. Satoru was uh, trying to sift through it, but unable to do so. Going for the cover here, we have one, we have two, and we have a three, Kazari, picking up a really, really quick victory here. Well, if, if, if Satoru wanted to make a statement here, I, I believe that it's been fully stuffed in by Kazarian here. Kazarian offering a handshake. And the Lord of Shadows accepting it. And celebrating with the winner here tonight. Now, I, I, I'm not necessarily sure whether or not that's a good idea to be sh shaking a man like Offering a handshake to a man like Satoru, but hey, Kazarian going for it, so maybe he sees something in the man. We will have to see see what comes out of this. That's a very eerie duo as, as far as I can tell, but yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next match of the program here. The fourth match of the night is the men's martial arts championship title match. Green Cyclone punching in his title opportunity matchup request, going up against Marshall David. And as the champion's defense ruling goes into Pro Masters, the defending champion has chosen a submission fight. The following contest is a submission match. And is for the Men's Martial Arts Championship! Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for some definitely wild action as Green Cyclone coming in here looking to earn the Men's Martial Arts Championship title for himself. And will be definitely one exciting match up here. Green Cyclone had himself the opportunity to go for the men's rated R title. Last Thursday against the Demon King. However, he he ran out of that fight. He he knew that if it was gonna be ending up in that fight, it he it would end up seriously damaging him and well, I, just that he he knew he had a title opportunity coming up. I mean, you get you can say whatever you want want about it. You can say uh, uh, justify however you want. It still doesn't change the matter matter of the fact that he he chose to run away from that fight. Talk about an opportunistic nature, but he definitely needed needed to be on top of his game tonight, as he's facing off against one of the toughest of them all. A season one veteran bowler, multiple time championship title holder, Marshall David here. Yeah, the title record has been absolutely fantastic for David. One time P 
pure wrestling championship holder. One, one, one time Grand Prix title holder. Also had the opportunity to hold the Men's Martial Arts title. Which he is doing right now, I mean. Introducing the challenger from the Shang Dynasty, weighing in at 156 pounds, Green Cyclone. He's warming up those legs. Hopefully, he won't be running away this time. And introducing the champion from Authority Mega Corp headquarters, weighing in at 194 pounds. He is the men's martial arts champion, Marshall David. All right, and let's see what will come of this title match here. With some fight here. No pinfalls, no count outs, no disqualifications. Truly just testing, testing a match. Martial arts capabilities to the fullest. And here we go, the bell has rung and the fight is on. Three green cyclone already locking up the champion here. Brings around. Oh, beautiful backbreaker. Yeah, th th that, uh, that's the martial arts mastery that we're talking about and exactly what this title is all about. You have to have the technical uh, uh, technical mastery in your art, you have to have the strategy to go go for the uh, right attacks at the right time and definitely the single leg camel clutch was not the right attack to go at this time here yeah, the single leg camel clutch, it's, it's becoming one of those attacks that e everyone uses I, like I, I, I get it that pe people like, like to pick up uh, people like to go, well I don't know, how, how, sh how should I say this, you know People like to one pick up attacks from others, you know, replicate what they're doing if they see it, it's becoming effective. But at the same time, it, it it's real lazy, you know, from the uh, from um, a developing aspect, you know, a de developing aspect of the sports entertainment. If if everyone is using the same maneuver and instead instead like there's a whole card of moves that you could be doing a whole 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 a uh, whole. A selection of missile holds that you could be doing. Not everyone has to go for that single like camel clutch. Uh, you know that that that's just showcasing not not a creative mind. But we are we are not here to talk about. Well, we are actually here to talk about the development of the brawlers. But yeah, and once again looking up the single like camel clutch. So I I just finished talking about it. I know already green cyclone. Goes, goes back to it. Well, showcases at least that he, he wants to go for that title. No, nothing short short of that. I I, I would just like uh, if there if he had a, a showcase a bit more variety into his move. I mean, he's an agile young man. He's definitely uh, agile. He's nimble. He's quick. He could go for a, a lot more. Uh, uh, like with he, with his physique, he could go for. Something a bit more that, that would aid a, a more technical hold, you know? A single leg camel clutch after all relies on... Well, it has that technical aspect in it, it, but it, it also relies a good amount of power here. Marshall David trying to get hold of the green cyclone. Gets caught. Beautiful neck breaker from behind. Kick to the face there. Marshall David back up to his feet. Lifting up. German suplex. Suplexing the man down and... Declaring it already over the mats here. Yeah, and he's gonna also lock up a single leg camel clutch. Yeah, it's it's yeah, talk about Well, I, I suppose he wanted to show how it's drawn by a by an expert. Get sunset flip power bump for that. Green Cyclone. Looking for an opportunity to strike here. Gonna be coming around, lifting up. No! 
sunset flip key are rolling up into the cover. No, no reason to go for a cover, you know, there's no pinfalls in this match. But there are submissions and this could definitely do it. Submission hold locked in with the sleeper hold, Marshall David special. Rope breaks do not mean a squat, so gonna have to figure out a way out of this one. And with a stunner, definitely gonna be doing that, a jaw breaking stunner at that. Going for strikes, trying to keep a beautiful kick, beautiful spin kick there from, from this. Looking to be a martial artist and not a cyclone pile driver. Now looking up a single leg hold. Gonna go for a single leg Boston crap actually. Turned around. Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about with technical holds. Bring it onto the back. Really just wrenching it in, putting his body on top of Marshall Dave. It's not enough though, as he was about to get back up to his feet. But Green Cyclone letting go of the hold. The standing shooting star press now. Picking up the champion springboard, no handspring. Looks up the head. Solid head scissors take down there. Marshall David gets caught again. Green Cyclone really just pulling out e every single maneuver he has in his book here. Lights up a kick to the back. Setting up. Nitro, arm breaker. And really just wanting the champion to pick up another gear here. Let's see if he's able to, especially if the green cyclone come, come in diving with the moonsault off the top rope. Picks up the champion once again. At this rate, we are going to actually get a new champion, green cyclone. Solid kick there, not full impact there. Beautiful duck. And once again, looking up the head scissors. Taking down the champion for a ride. And now, once again, with the single leg camel clutch, okay. I mean, this would be a really... I, 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 I don't know, just a really lackluster way to bring an end to this match. I mean, yeah, it's the single leg camel clutch and the bow and arrow hold that are the most frequented. Especially the champion. Oh, busting him over and against that turnbuckle. Kicking the knee down and gonna line up one more time. The Cyclone Pile Driver. Oh, I think the champion got knocked out with that. Gonna have to work quick here if he's hoping. Yeah, gonna go for that single leg camel clutch. Well, there's no doubt about it. We're gonna have a new champion. Yeah, champion taps out. Marshall David taps out. Bell has swung. A green Cyclone. Earning himself the title, the mar men's martial arts title, not only that, but gonna be earning himself a spot in the uh, Brawlmasters Breakthrough next Sunday. Here is your winner and new men's martial arts champion, Green Cyclone! Very well fought, fought after four. And Green Cyclone now, standing tall, starting out here in the Pro Masters as a uh, want, want to be a martial artist, and now with the Pro Masters Martial Arts Championship title, I believe this young man has made a very impressive journey so far. But this, uh, this is just only a one milestone along that journey. What's going to be coming up next is going to be defending that title and seeing if he's truly worthy of being a champion. Coming up to the halfway point of the show tonight, we have a two-on-two -two tag team match, and this is for the number one contender position in the Men's Wrestling Alliance Championship Division. Taking part in this fight, we have the Queens, Cutie by Cook and Jackie Jackson, facing off against the Olympian legends, Spartacus and Punk Hercules. Pounds, the Queens. 
the Queen's Jackie Jackson cutie by Cook having defeated the Hunter Bros for this opportunity here in this uh, advancing in this tournament type of a deal. Now as the potential number one contenders looking to earn both of them into the breakthrough event cutie by Cook of course automatically entering the season finale as he's gonna be defending that season three championship uh, season championship overall who's gonna be crowned as the season four champion we'll find out currently the most likely prospect currently leading overall in the scoring situation is Selena Bowl Tampa we'll see whether or not that will come true and their opponents at a combined weight of 423 pounds the Olympians the Olympian legend Spartacus and Punk Hercules definitely a team that's been a long time in the making. I mean, both of them season one veterans as well. Not much interaction between the two. Well, occasional fight between one another, and but always been full of respect. And that's saying a lot for Van Kerkles. I mean, he's a man with no respect usually, but he, he, he knows how to give it when he feels like it at least. And I suppose hanging around with the mighty man Bardicus is. He's giving him some kind of aspect into that, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we will see whether, whether or not respect is all you need. Definitely, this one is going to be requiring everything the either team has. Bell has swung, and this number one contender match is on. Judy by Cook and Punk Turkey is starting off in the ring. The winner of this match, the winners of this match, I would, would say, the winning team of this match will be facing off against the defending men's wrestling alliance champions that was made by cutie by cook jackie jackson now in winners will be facing off against the men's wrestling alliance champions captain cooper and outlaw casey who defeated the riverman blues team for the titles at the summer brawl that will be definitely interesting to see both of these teams have definitely been making heads and definitely have earned themselves a chance at this but which one will, will earn the ultimate chance, the ultimate opportunity to go after the Wrestling Alliance titles, we will see. Particles tacked in and clubbing, clubbing the Queen here. Yeah, this is just a full-on Season 1 veteran matchup. Ev everyone starting in from day one. And once again, every everyone hungry for gold. And the winners are going to be facing off against uh, also Season 1 veterans as uh, uh, like Asian Captain Cooper also started. Uh, day one at the Welcome Pro Masters Premium Show. Yeah, not a, not much of a size advantage, so a size a size difference here, but definitely a difference in strength. Bardicus absolutely a powerful man for his size, able to lift off even even the biggest of them all, lifting up. Oh. Slamming PewDiePie against the turnbuckles with the Exploder Suplex lifting up so called and tossing the season 3 champion across the ringside. Yeah, it would be absolutely huge for PewDiePie. PewDiePie Cook, at least, to. Well, then again, it would be absolutely straining for him if he has to fight two matches in the same event. Stomping on the leg there, Punk Turkley is coming in, springboard, oh, missing as Cutiepie was able to shift his position just, just in the nick of time before the connection gets a DDT. And now hooks up the leg, Punk Turkley is only a one count. Yeah, the fanboy definitely not, not in as much control as you would have expected. Well, maybe now hoping to turn things around, oh no, gets slingshot at. Trying to make the tag now, making the tag. Punk Herky is stomping the leg to give a fun final send off. Jackie Jackson now as the office, the legal man inside the ring. Man, question mark. Uh, however, you wanna. I mean, yeah, we're not gonna get into that uh, 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 conversation. Cutie by coming to the fight with Punk Hercules, uh, giving, the, giving Jackie Jackson the opportunity, dropping down. Him against their apron. Three. Setting up, sending back is at the ring. Yeah, the apron, definitely the hardest part. The most structurally sound part of the ring, so. 
Not something you wanna, wanna be landing on. Knee lift. Stomp. Another stomp. The queen is down. Lining up. Waiting for the opportunity. One more stomp from the punk. And with that makes his way to his partner. The Olympia Legends rotating. As the power man. The mighty. The legendary Particus. Is back inside the ring. The man carrying on with the legacy. Of the Olympian gods. The Hellenic League. Going for the cover. Not even a one count. Yeah, Particles might be powerful, but Jackie is a whole lot of man to take down and keep down at that. Probably require a good amount of tiring out before even hoping to go for a pinfall. I mean, about kicking to the back. Making the tag punk Hercules now. I'll be looking for a big maneuver. Off the top rope, comes in with the elbow to the back. With that, hoping to get a victory here. Let's see who kept the leg. We have one, we have two count, and we have a kick out. And Particus was really ready to take down Cutie Pie, who was more than certain that Jackie would be kicking out of that one. Elbow to the face there, knee lift, and stomping again. Dropping the knee to the back. And with that, Punk Hercules getting to the corner and winding himself up. Jackie better watch out as we are gonna see the classic attack here, the fastball punch, and you are out of there. Picking up the queen here, oh, gets countered, queen, about to lay down a smackdown, or at least a beatdown, lifting up. Parading the punk around like he has caught the first prize in something, and he's definitely feeling just like that, brings down the stalling suplex. Yeah, that's just power. Particles might be, the, might be the most powerful man in the ring, but Jackie Jackson is not that far behind. Absolutely a unit of a man. Punk wrenching the arm, taking it behind, but gets punches to the side. Jackie able to liberate himself. No, gets caught. Take it down with the leg twist. Punk Hercules trying to summon up the crowd to his side, doesn't even notice that the tag was made. Cutie by cool, able to get Punk Hercules uh, with a surprise coming in, knee lift to the face. With that goes for the cover, here we have one and a kick out. Coming around, rushing in, climbing to the top rope for a big maneuver, ready for Punk. To get back up to his feet, and here he comes, missing. Yeah, not enough flight on that, hitting both of the knees to the canvas. Still able to get back up, and before Punk Hercules was able to realize what's going on, well, no longer with that knee lift. Uh, I elbow to the face, and now lifting up. Layout court buster. The Punk making the tag, Particles now tagged in. Cutie just lying on the mat here. As Spartacus goes and mounts him. <laughs> Lucky guy, I would say. Elbows to the face and also to the shoulder as well. Lifting up military. No, yes. Mili yeah, there we go. Military press now. Slams him down. Hooks up the leg away for victory. Here we have one. Jackie Jackson from behind breaks it up. Gets caught by Hercules. Coming to aid his partner, not does nothing about it, elbow to the back and sets the queen outside are gonna be taking this fight to the outside as well. Yeah, the Olympia Legends definitely wa wanting to get into that breakthrough event, take it down, driving in the face there, right to the floor. Meanwhile, Particles measuring up here, gonna be looking to do the power slam, gets countered, no, PewDiePie gets countered as well. Lift it up, solid suplex here. Scrubbing the face with the forearm. On the ringside, Jackie Jackson and Punk Hercules keeping up with their fight. Well, someone got taken out, hard to say who. Oh, Punk Hercules probably took down Jackie. Park was looking for a very devastating maneuver, drops the knee straight to the chest and with that hoping for a victory here we have one we have two and we have a kick out cutie by cook still holding strong 
But I don't know for how much longer I have to face off against this, this absolute muscle of a man. Man of muscles. Close line. And now punching to the face. Kudibai gets hold of the arm, tracks him down. Going for an attack now, Jackie Jackson. Definitely attack he needed. And Jackie Jackson, well, I don't know how rested he is after getting beaten down by Punk Hercules, but let's see, at least for now, able to lift up Particus. Yeah, not necessarily as powerful, but that size advantage of his definitely coming in to the play here. Taki and Cutie by Cook again, both of the main crashing against one another. Cutie by takes the opportunity, locks up here. Rolling on prettier. Cutie by hoping for a victory here. Goes for the cover, two count. Gonna have to go for at least one more big maneuver before hoping to get a victory, sending Particles into the corner and tack has been made by the Queens. Beauty by lining up Hurricane Rana and a beautiful power bomb catch there by Jackie. Particles, however, able to make a recovery and get back up to his feet from there, locking up the Queen. Now look at this power. Yeah, if that doesn't say the Particles is the, is the mightiest of them all, then I don't know what. Tag has been made. Punk Hercules now tagged in. He's gonna be winding it up one more time. Rented up the fist into a ball. And here's the pitch. Jackie has been taken out and Punk Hercules hoping for a victory. We have two. And there comes Cutie by Cook breaking it up. Setting up the arm here, twisting it around. Summoning up more and more energy from the audience, declaring this match to be over. I don't know where he was walking off to, but Jackie Jackson with the opportunity gets a hold of him, drops him down to that top rope. Attack made, duty by Cook, now inside the ring, kicks Park, uh, Park Hercules and takes down with the head scissors DDD, the fanboy uh, killer flies. Goes for the cover, we have one, we have two. Kick out. I'm cutie by definitely frustrated by that. I would be definitely hitting your best attack on your opponent coming in. Oh yeah, way too far away from that target. Hitting your best attack on your opponent and then still kicking out that will definitely frustrate anyone. Sending Punk Hercules over the top rope. Double te teaming from the Queens there. Jackie attacking the legs, cutie by attacking the face. Coming in. Ooh, beautiful vaulting splash. Yeah. Despite not, not being, well, Olympic legend, so you would assume this man is all about taking part in the Olympics. Go to sleep into a German suplex. Look at this very beautiful bridge here. Unfortunately, beautiful is one thing, but effective is another. Well, I'm sure it would have been plenty effective if Jackie had not broken it up. Sending him to the ropes, putting on the brakes, though. Getting caught by Van Kirklis here. Look at this, yeah. Particles, not the only man able to lift up. Jackie Jackson, cutie by with the opportunity, he locks up, Punk Hercules, jumping bulldog, landed straight first, oh he's really bleeding there, we have one, we have kick out, only a one count, Tag has been made and Jackie Jackson now, inside the ring, taking down Punk Hercules who was coming right straight at him, didn't look like he had any plan in mind, Either that or Queen was just able to read it perfectly through. Punishing the shoulder there with elbows and now kick to the gut. Gonna be looking for a Fisherman Brain Buster. Reaches it into the cover. Oh, a very nice camera angle. Particles rushes in to break up the pin. Able to get a two count and now the Queen's double teaming Particles. Really just punishing him. Super atomic drop. Delivered by the Queen and now punching straight to the face. The mighty man is not so mighty anymore. Lifting up, gonna be going for that Alabama slam. Catapulting Punk Hercules to the ring. Being up. Gets countered, punch to the face. Lining up here. Backbreaker into a neckbreaker. 
Absolutely a combination I love to see, no matter how many times I see it. Punk Hercules going for the cover, two count, and three. No, right before a three count, Jackie Jackson kicks out. Keeps the matchup going for now. Punk Hercules missing and hitting himself onto the hamstring. Both men getting back up to their feet. Punk Hercules missing, so is the Queen. Big boot! Well, finally someone was able to connect with that. Jackie Jackson going for cover. We have one, we have two, and kick out. Tossing off Jackie Jackson. Preventing a three count, crossing. Now the elbow against the shoulder and the neck as well. Picked up. Setting up and trying to set up the man into the corner. Let's see another tag team display here by the Queens. Keeping it trapped and going for the double axe handle to the arm breaker. Sending Punk Hercules outside duty by Cook. I don't know what the plan here is. Maybe to take a rest. A timeout. Jackie Jackson and Cutie Pie both drop down. Jackie climbing back to the apron and Cutie Pie keeping up with the attacks for for at least now. Looks up the head going for headlock punches. Kick to the gut there. Punk Hercules able to make a reversal. No gets caught and sent. Tried to send him somewhere but putting on the brakes. Reversal into a DDT. Fighting on the floor here on the team match, fortunately. Up to a six count now. Beauty by back inside the ring. We're going up to a seven count. On Hercules is getting back up to his feet. Not about to let this match end up in a count out. Yeah, making back right at the nick of time before the nine count. Gets a lot of cutie by trying to track him to the Olympian corner here. Yeah, attack has been made. The Olympian legends, Punk Hercules keeping in trap. And a big boot there from Bart goes straight to the midsection. Double under who butterfly suplex. Definitely a big powerful maneuver. Cutie by trying to catch his wits. But Bardock was not about taking full advantage of the situation. Double axe and over the back. Taking the leg trap, kicking it from behind. That's gonna be leaving a sore, something sore. Ali oop. And really just putting on the resiliency and endurance to the test here. Bardicus looking for the opportunity to come in striking. Finishing off, no, Cutie Pie escaping, once again avoiding the power slam of Particus. Setting up and against the ropes here, Cutie Pie chops across the chest and gives Particus a taste of his own medicine, more or less so, at least straining that leg across the middle rope. Trying to catch hold, but gets caught by Particus. Gonna be lining up another military press slam. And there goes Cutie Pie. Shoulders are down, and here we go for the cover, we have two, and we have a three. Particles picking up a victory, and with that the Olympia legends securing themselves a title match against Cooper's crew at the Breakthrough Premium Show. Let's take a look at the replays here, both of the teams definitely gave it their all tonight. Absolutely fantastic and this team well not looking so fantastic right now But no doubt about it if they're able to earn that gold for themselves gonna be looking all the more fantastic And all the victories leading up to that night leading up to tonight have been more than worth it Let's see whether or not these two will be absolutely able to take down the reigning wrestling alliance champions But we still got a few more matches coming up tonight. So let's get on to the next one
Next up, we have the men's internet championship title match. Taking part in this, the defending champion Henry Louis Marceau has chosen a last man standing stipulation. And the challenger tonight is none other than Jean Pierre Jack. The following contest is a last man standing match and is for the Men's Internet Championship. And here comes the challenger, Junkyard Jack. There's going to be one interesting matchup for him. Last man standing rules. No, dis uh, no disqualification, no pinfalls, no count outs, no submissions. Keep your opponent down for a full 10 seconds and you win the title. You would imagine that a very hyper person like Chuck or Jack would, would be benefiting from this match, but hey, it was the champion's call, so let's see. I guess uh, the champion wanted to be all about style tonight, so not gonna be. Wearing himself down uh, unnecessarily. Here he comes, the defending men's internet champion Henry Louis Wa Marceau, or as we also know him, the Disco Warrior. Absolutely a fantastic style, fantastic specimen of a man. Definitely knows what it takes to please a crowd. Whether it's in the, on the dance floor or inside the squared circle. Are definitely a fan favorite and definitely one of the highest stars. The greatest stars from, back from season 2. And let's see whether hopefully he's not too focused on keeping up appearances tonight as he... As Jack or Jack, uh, warriors surviving the wasteland, the borderlands, the badlands, whatever you wanna call them. He's it's gonna definitely require a lot to take a man like him down. I mean, is he able to he's able to survive the apocalypse? And what has Henry has been able to survive? A few shots. I'm not talking about you know gun shots, but at the bar. Let's see, let's see. Introducing the challenger from the wasteland. Weighing in at 218 pounds, Junkyard Jack. And introducing the champion from the nearest nightclub. Weighing in at 206 pounds, he is the men's internet champion, Henry Louis Marceau. Once again, the internet championship on the line and the men's title for the last time available until the breakthrough. That's right, the, the next time this title will be defended will be at the Brawlmasters Breakthrough Premium Show next Sunday. Let's see which one of these men will be getting into that match, which, will, which one will be defending the title there. Here we go, Bear has rung at the last man standing rules applying here. No pinfalls, no submissions, no knockouts. Well, a knockout in that sense that you have to keep your opponent down. You cannot be attacking your opponent or actually pressing them down. They have to be lying on the ground by themselves. If you attack them, the counts get reset. The challenger already taking down the challenger with a variation of a Hurricane Rana. Champion now retaliating. North Light Suplex. The Disco Warrior versus the Badlands Warrior uh, definitely saw something very interesting, very interesting to see here, and definitely both of them uh, fitting, very, very fitting into that internet championship uh, aspect. I mean, at these type of matches, you can only witness online, really, or online environment. Of course, unfortunately, for those who happen, who, those 
fortunate enough to be taking part of the uh, ringside here on, on in the, our live audience. Great to have them out as always. Junkyard Jack locking up here. Brings down a reverse DDT. Lining up here. Dropkick straight to the spine. Champion. Very nasty roll up there. Rolls back up to. And tries to climb up back to his feet. But better watch out as. There's a big man coming straight for a beautiful. Corkscrew. I don't even. Know what, what that move was called. But. Well, as long as it connects, I suppose that's all that matters. Henry looking for a submission hold here, traps the arm and goes for a cross face. Now submissions cannot win you the fight, but it'll definitely be a good way to test out your opponent, mess around and try to strain them up as much as possible, of course, that also if if your opponent is still in good, way too good a shape, that gives them the opportunity to turn things around, sending Henry outside of the ring. The champion is down. Referee not starting the count for some reason, and Henry springs up to his feet. Count out can also happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen inside the ring. Kick to the gut there. As the Disco Warrior showcasing what it means to be a champion. Shoulder block. Coming around, lifting up. Uh, inverted atomic drop. And now a scoop slam, taking down the challenger. Referee starting the count now. Let's see whether or not that was enough. The Disco Warrior definitely... No, he thinks he, that's not enough. He's gesturing at the champ, uh, challenger to get back up to his feet. But we're already up to a five count. Six. And seven. It Was that it? Eight count. The challenger is still down. Nine count. No, what is Henry doing? He could have earned the victory right there. He was up to a nine count. But he chooses to keep the match going. Goes for the leg sweep. The Disco Warriors leg drop. Well, if there were any doubts about finishing the match, then pretty sure that did it. I suppose he wanted to give the fans a bit more show there. Did not want this match to end up real too soon. Up to a five count halfway there. But still, gotta go. Seven. Junkyard Jack. He's not even moving. I think he got knocked out by that. Nine. No, what is Henry doing? Goes for the back, uh, kicking the back again and breaking up the count. What is he doing? He could have already won the match twice. I mean, talk about bringing in suspense, but yeah, this is not a popularity contest. This is a uh, fight, fighting sport. This is a combat sport, and at the end of the day, all that uh, uh, matters is uh, getting a victory, sending the challenger outside now. Referee taking his sweet time to get into position to ensure that Junkyard Chat is actually down. And he's all the way across the ringside there. I don't think he can even see properly. And let's see whether or not Henry is going to be breaking up this count. I mean, he had to get, he would have to get outside for that. And I, I guess that's his way too much trouble from him. I guess he wanted to do here is send, send the challenger outside to keep the ring all to himself. We have a nine count and ten. Okay, that did it. This time, Henry. Yeah, talk about a very cocky way to ensure your victory. And the match could have ended so many, so much earlier. This was just unnecessary. This was just full-on unnecessary from the champion. Here is your winner, and still, men's internet champion, Henry Lewis Marshall. Well, talk about putting on a show for the fans. I just hope that you appreciated that. I, I'm not sure whether or not I appreciated that, but hey, the man is all about crowd pleasing. So if, if that did it, then good job. Succeeded on def successful title defense. Next up, we have a quite an interesting situation at our hands here. We have the Demon King Eraser going up against William Stars tonight. Not putting on the title on the line, we'll talk about that soon enough. And also joining on the ringside, we have Dr. Edwards. 
Let's see what will come from this match. Ladies and gentlemen, Butcher has to get her for the men's Grand Prix champion, the Hammer, William Styles. Very tall and proud as always. And for a good reason too that top title of the entire series around his waist. Excluding of course the season championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Springfield, Illinois. Weighing in at 275 pounds. The men's Grand Prix Champion, Hammer William Styles. Yeah, the situation going on with this match, and it was not randomly chosen. William Styles wanted to go after the Demon King, want, have been, wanted to go after him for a long time, but just like with the rest of the men's uh, roster, being a bit wary of the of the rated R champion. Not willing to face off against him up until tonight. Last Thursday, after all, this masked man, whoever it was, managing to take down the Demon King on the rings, and that apparently has caused some kind of a shift here. Not only William Stubbs, but a whole other other people questioning the mighty of the Demon King. William Stubbs now here, hoping to add add fuel to those flames. Try try to really just undermine the Demon King's presence here. And I, I, I guess it's already been plenty undermined considering he's not putting the title on the line here and not only and that but... accompanied by Dr. Edwards representing the Faces of Fear from the Pits of Hell. Weighing in at 235 pounds, the Men's Rated R Champion, Demon. Yeah, not only that, not not only not putting the title on the line, but also calling in Dr. Edwards to be his backup for tonight, to be standing at the ringside, just to ensure that, well, I, I guess that William Stars will not be running away just like Green Cyclone did last Thursday, but also that no one will be running interferences during the match. Let's see, as the duo face off against each other, this time for for the first time against one another, and this is also a matchup in the making. Uh, after William Stars won that Grand Prix title at the Summer Brawl, the Demon King offered William a place in his vision, part of the team here, if, if he would only serve under him. William Stars, however, gave him a very very strict answer, a very very strict way of telling him no, as he later came in and attacked the Demon King. And Demon King ever since has been lo looking forward to this uh, building momentum, trying to use that rated R title to build up momentum, trying to build up fear in the men's division and uncertainty. So that he would be facing off against William Styles in, in, in the breakthrough and look, look at things. Look at things, they, it could definitely go go that way, depending on how, how this matchup goes here. But William Styles definitely so showcasing that he's not afraid of the man, at least not, not as much as he was prior to the uh, prior to first day's events. And this could go this could go either way. Grand Prix champion versus rated R champion. The Demon King also wanted a match against the masked man who who attacked him in the backstage. But uh, yeah, I was I was uh, I at least was unable to contact him, and I I, I heard the management. No, not able to get in contact with whoever that was. So we will, we will see whether or not that was a one-off thing, or is he actually still looking for a fight? William Styles coming in to fill in that void instead. Picking up the rated R champion William here, knee lift to the face. And with that goes for the cover here, we have one, we have two count and kick out. Yeah, despite everything, despite all the momentum the Demon King has built, he's 
being laid down here. Chain link, uh, I mean, uh, seven star lariat here goes for the cover, two count, and no shoulder up again by the Demon King. Gonna be requiring a lot more than that from the Grand Prix champion. Well, I don't know a lot more, not necessarily Spinebuster, no, turns it into a Bulldog. Demon, Demon King Eraser gets to the top of the situation, picking up the champion here. I'm now trying to track him up into the corner. Probably no doubt about it. The Demon nails slash right across the chest. Picks up his opponent, a close line from hell. Yeah, that one two combo definitely doing wonders here. Going for the cover. Here we have one, two, and a kick out. The Grand Prix champion still managing to kick out. Not sure what he has in store or how he's able to do that. Demon King rushing outside of the ring. And challenging Williams to come right after him. The two are going to be taking this fight to the outside, it seems. Fighting right next to the audience. Setting up parallel leg sweep. Taking down Williams Styles. And now kicking to the back. Countouts are illegal. So, remains to be seen. Sending Williams straight against the security barrier. Hopefully this will be a short stay on the ringside. Not much on the line, I mean the title isn't on the line, but uh, I suppose it's a statement victory either way around, lifting up. Beautiful side suplex there from the hammer. After a seven count now, Eraser countering, sending William against the security barrier again, and with that, Demon King making his way back inside the ring. Very cocky now, celebrating his victory. I think William, he really has to hurry up. No, doesn't beat the 10 count. The Demon King gets a victory by a technical count out. Well, that's definitely one way. Well, I don't know. It says a lot that the Demon King didn't, didn't go for a pin or a submission, but still a win is a win. I, I would say that the pressure is mounting on the Demon King here, but still able to secure a victory. And not only that, but a victory against the Grand Prix champion, even though we're a very cheap one. Here is your winner, Demon King E. Razor! Well, victory celebration, but wait a minute. The masked man has returned. What is this? Drop kick. Straight from, straight from this mysterious warrior, William Stubb, escaping. And with that, this masked man once again appearing into the show and... Dr. Edwards, I don't know what he's doing, but he's not giving much assistance to the Demon King, rushing in and out of the ring multiple times, but so doesn't do anything to take the ma fight off, to prevent the fight, as he's getting suplexed, the Demon King, the Rated R Champion, getting suplexed multiple times, or now trying to catch hold there, but it's all too late, the Demon King has been once again laid down. Whoever this man is, there's no doubt about that. This situation will only get worse from here. And no doubt about it. They, they will make, make one more appearance. At least one more appearance at the breakthrough through event. We, we will have to wait on what's, uh, what's out for that. But for now, we gotta move on with the next match. Eighth match of the night is gonna be a triple threat women's match, and this is part in the women's Grand Prix Championship title. That's right, the winner of this triple threat match will be facing off against Gabby Gardner next Thursday for the number one contender position. Taking part in this fight, we have Martha Baker, Rachel Curtis, and Burn Storm. Mrs. Martha Baker! 
Joker! Real excited matchup, definitely. Three, all these three women have been one of the most, have been uh, during their time, very emphatic champions, very powerful champions, and uh, just all to get her standard bearers here in the Pro Masters. Martha Baker making a remarkable mark during the second season where she hold multiple championship titles as he has included be being at one time a Grand Prix champion herself. So let's see. We're looking real excited to this opportunity. She is and I am, I am as well. And we have uh, joining from the third season of definitely a powerhouse brawler unlike any other. First from Canada. Rachel Curtis! Rachel Curtis be, being the woman who defeated Martha Baker for the Grand Prix title uh, at, at the end of se Season 3 was able to hold hold on to it at the start of Season 4 and now with an opportunity to reclaim it yeah, it would be really poetic for her to be the one to get the title but to do that she has to win not only tonight but also next week on Thursday against Kathy Gardner for that, for that number one contender position. And then next week at the Sunday Bra uh, Brawlmaster Breakthrough Premium Show. Yeah, so three victories le left to claim. If she's able to do that, she'll and be the champion. Representing the Alliance from Aberdeen, Scotland, Burnstorm! Yeah, representing the Hero Alliance, the Hero Burnstorm, the Flame Elemental Hero here. One of the greatest champions we had for the junior fighting title during the third season. And now aiming to the highest price of them all. Speaking of the Alliance Flyboy, unfortunately, uh, after the last match last Thursday, is now suffering from a neck injury, so he'll be out of commission at least until the end of the se season. Yeah, getting, getting, getting multiple strikes to the back of the neck during that very brutal submission match it, it was not good for him and he has for that reason dropped out of the competition until he's fully recovered not sure for how long but at least until the end of the season but we are not here to talk about Flyboy we are here to talk about these three very powerful and very fantastic women each of them definitely championship caliber main event deserving let's see which one of them will be actually getting to the Grand Prix title, or at least potentially getting after all. Kathy Gardner still stands in the way of all of them. We'll find out which uh, who, who will be actually get, getting into the Grand Prix Championship fight, who will be going up against Amaya Grace next Thursday. Rachel Curtis is hitting the crowd up and Burns from dropping down Marfa with a back suplex drop. Going after Rachel Curtis now. Kick gets caught. That's a whole lot of women lifting up. Dropping down Burnstone right to the top rope. Martha Baker now yeah, getting the, trying to get the cheers on her side. She should be more focused on the fight here. Well, now she's doing exactly that. Rachel stand against the ropes here. Clubbing and elbow across the face. Taking a lot of speed here. Beautiful handspring and drops down the knees. If you're wondering why I say everything is beautiful, that's because everything is beautiful. That the way these people are executing their moves, it's just on another level. You can blame me for that, but it's it's not gonna change. I'm trying to change it, but I don't know if it's gonna change. Dropping down Marfa Baker with a suplex. Okay, struck down. Oh, Marfa missing with the clothesline, catching hold of Burnstone from behind, but. Elbows to the midsection, allowing her to liberate herself. Double knee face breaker drops down Marfa. Rachel Curtis now slaps the face and lifting up Fireman Scary here. Lining up, snake eyeing Burnstone. Face first into the turnbuckle. And now choking with the boot. Picking up here, Martha Baker rushes in and cuts herself in between the two, sending Burnstorm out of the ring as he was to go up against Rachel one on one. Mano y mano, setting a parallel leg sweep, crossing the arm against the 
Matt here lining up. Drop kick to the back. But evidently one of the more experienced competitors here. So I'm missing the punch, but able to get the control here. Going after Burnstorm now. Changing targets. Goes for the suplex. And with that Burnstorm once again getting out of the ring and looking for refuge on the outside. Meanwhile, Rachel Curtis lifting up Marfa to the top rope. Poor position. Oh, she gets tossed off. Rachel stepping outside. Coming after Marfa, Marfa Baker. There are no countouts in a triple threat match. So, but the match has to end inside the ring, either by a pinfall or by, or by a submission hold. Catching hold. Sending Marfa across the ringside, but here Spurnstorm coming in from behind. Sending Rachel back into the ring. Jumping in herself. Gets caught. No, catches the kick right before connecting. Burnstorm in a really good position. Trying to set Rachel up for a big maneuver here. Elbow to the throat there. And if that dropping her down, what is she doing? Picking up momentum. Knee to the face. Uh, not so much a big maneuver. Marfa now being made the target. Who catches... Burnstorm up, brings her around, no arm track reversal. Burnstorm has taken up both Marfa and Rachel. But she uh, still has a long way to go, setting up here. Storm Zero into the cover. We have one, we have two, kick out. Avoided that three fall. Flapjack there from Rachel Curtis, taking, taking advantage of the full speed that Burnstorm was rushing at towards her. Cross in the back. Oh, beautiful reversal. Okay, getting back into it and getting the cheer of the fans. The fans definitely love a superhero, but she needs to watch out as Marfa setting up that. She's gonna be baking up that stunner. Looks up that leg and going for cover. We have two and kick out. Yeah, most, uh, most grandmothers would be baking up cookies. This one bakes up stunners. Setting up Clam Slam. And now into the cover. Break broken up by Rachel Curtis. Rachel now sent again to the ropes. Making her way across the ring, avoiding Marfa in the process. Gets sent into the corner now. Setting up here. What is he? Trapped across the middle rope. Meteora. Driving both of these into the middle uh, into the core, so. Burnstorm now catching hold of Marfa, keeping her stunned in this combination. Flurry of attacks. DDD drops her down and makes her reject out of the ring. Gonna give Rachel now a taste of that as well, or at least a spinning heel kick. Yeah, so so far the momentum really just favoring one brawler at a time. Turning around and lifting Rachel up to the top rope. What is she planning? Lifting. Look at this power. Massive power display here by Burnstorm. Burning hammer. A variation of a brain buster. Into the cover now. We have two count. Three. No. Kick out right before a free count. And Marfa really close. Really almost letting it happen. O almost letting Burnstorm get the victory. Well, she might be doing just that. Storm Zero one more time. Into the cover. No kick from behind. Rachel Curtis breaking up the hold there. Float over DDT. Getting, trying to get back up to her feet, but Burnstorm making sure she stays down. Sliding an elbow tackle to the back. And there she goes with that ejected out of the ring. Marfa B Baker, meanwhile, playing Bassum. Setting up here. Oh, sling blade from Burnstorm. Kick from Marfa. Counter after counter, both of these women definitely wa want the position to go up against Kathy Gartner. I suppose one more than so uh, the other. Uh, Marfa Baker and Kathy Gartner have a good amount of history, good amount of beep with one another. Here comes Burnstorm. Catching all that setting up. Lighting up, beautiful driver. So slams down the queen of the bubbles. And Rachel Gart is from behind. Wrestling takedown, waist lock takedowns, catching hold of the face. 
poor decision. Striking with her ability gets caught. Martha Baker sending Burnstorm away at another wrestling takedown. The wrestler takedown, I mean. Rachel Curtis demonstrating a good solid technique. Side leg sweep there from Martha. Being picked up by Burnstorm sending her across the ringside. They are trying to create some separation uh, in this triple threat match. Rachel Curtis, the only woman inside the ring, taunting at anyone to come get at her. Rushes outside though. Caught by Burns from sending her back inside. Yeah, she wants Martha Baker all for herself. I don't know why. There's not been really much history between the two, so not sure what that's about. Trying to set Rachel against the apron, smacking her multiple times. Double knee face breaker again. Setting up, locking up. It's beautiful. Solid submission hold here. Gets broken up though. Drops across the chest. Martha Baker taking control of the situation. Trying to set Burnstorm somewhere back into the ring. She goes. Gets caught. Rachel sending her across the ringside and now. Rachel and Burnstrom inside, ready to finish this match up here. Rachel eyeing at Burnstrom, measuring up, kick to the gut. Lifting her up, gonna be delivering that brain buster of hers. Yeah, both, both having a brain buster of their own. We have one, we have two, I don't know what Marfa is doing, but definitely not attempting to break up the pin. Once again, her hubris is getting the best of her. Locking up the Canadian backbreaker here. Lifted up, but Marfa this time re ready, on, ready on the call and immediately breaking up. Jawbreaker from Burnstorm and another leg sweep from Marfa now. Close line taking down Burnstorm as Marfa is now taking control of the situation and in a real good position goes for the cover now. We have one, we have two, and Marfa no kick out. Burnstorm kicking out. Let's see whether or not she'll be kicking out of this one, uh, 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 or after this one at least, setting up here. Clam slam. Slam down. Go for the cover now. Here we go for the victory. Martha Baker gonna be advancing. And ladies and gentlemen, once again we're gonna be getting an uh, iconic clash between Martha Baker and Kathy Gardner next Thursday for the number one contender position. Let's look at quick look at the replays here. As all these women definitely showcasing the best of their very own arsenals here. Yeah, Marfa just snapping back into action. Here is your winner, Mrs. Martha Baker. Nonetheless, whatever gets the job done, and tonight, this definitely did just that. Marfa one step closer to reclaiming that Grand Prix title. Let's see, she only has to defeat Kathy Gardner and the defending champion Amaya Grace. But now it's time for our main event. Coming up in the main event of tonight, we have a two on two tables, ladders, and chairs tag team match. And this is for the number one contender position for the Women's Wrestling Alliance Championship. Taking part in this tonight, we have the Natural Disasters, Riley the Nightmare and Matt Dog Whitney going up against the people defending their number one contender position, Snow Princess Yuri and Diane Van Dam. So I, I know, I know you have questions. The following we'll get to contest them soon enough. is a tag team tables, ladders, and chairs match, and the natural disasters. All right. So what is this match about? Why does the two cool team have to defend their number one contender position? Well, we we had a social media post from the Thrill Seekers defending Women's Wrestling Alliance champions deeming that them just winning one match against Amaya Grace and uh, the, the new foundation altogether is no, not enough uh, to uh, give them 
give the champions a real reason to be defending their titles. So what they have done is they, they have called in the natural disasters here, or actually naming the natural disasters, to be go going after the two cool team and uh, up on the up on the top of here on that briefcase is a written contract stating the number one position, number one contender position for the Midwest Wrestling Alliance team uh, championship. There are of course two women who are hoping to defend their position and uh, hoping to get into the breakthrough event. Yeah, you, Snow Princess Yuri was non, not one bit happy about the situation, how the champions called in here, but she's nonetheless ready to defend the, the title here. Uh, not title, but the number one contender position. Yeah, the, the champions were real impressed by the natural disasters as of, as of late, as they've been picking up victories to get her and, and on separate. They, they, they will be more willing to face up against them, but let's see, they have to actually earn the situation here tonight. Alright, let's see. Alright, I wish the contestants in the ring, we are about to kick off the main event here. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? That's Cooper's crew the team. Are you telling me that... Oh, she's back! The Cooper screw is back here! And... The Crew! Absolutely. I, yeah, I didn't know about this. Alexia Dregadotir has apparently made a full recovery fr from being taken out previously by Gloria Garcia. She and her tag team partner, Li Mei Nguyen, now... About to take part in this match. Is this official? I mean, yeah, the thrill seekers also mentioned the Cooper's crew, but they also realized that Alexia was still out. But I guess she's not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was. I just got uh, updated by the management. This is gonna be a triple threat TLC tag team match. Cooper's crew also gonna be taking part in this, just to make up for the fact that they've been unable to compete for the Wrestling Alliance Championship. Real exciting. Uh, yeah, what, what a way to what a way to make a comeback to the show here. All right, I, I cannot imagine the Snow Princess is one bit happy about the situation, but you gotta make do with the situation that uh, as it's lined up here, as we now have six women, two uh, three teams competing for the chance to go after vi the women's Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. TLC rules, of course, dictating that you have to get the briefcase and as previously stated inside that briefcase is a written con contract allowing you your team to be the only one to go go for the title let's see what's gonna happen here as we have Cooper screw just standing solely inside the ring watching as Riley the Nightmare just puts on full, full workout on, onto the snow princess yeah the, Natural disasters. Oh, and on the rings are Matt Doc Whitney also taking out Diane Van Dam. Yeah, the natural disasters have definitely be getting better and better these days. Double deeming from Cooper's crew. Oh, or at least Alexia Regadotir and Riley the Nightmare there against the Snow Princess. They're definitely trying to take her out of the competition for a good reason. After all, they defeated uh, the the two cool team defeating the new foundation that definitely made an impact in the women's division. Li Mei Nguyen has propped up a ladder between the security barrier and the ring. Very big ladder. Oh, and Diane just get launched right into it by Matt Doc Whitney no, now going after a table. No, she drops it down for some reason. I don't know what the plan there was. But... No, she goes back for it. No, she goes for another weapon. She's got a steel chair. Rushing at Snow Princess Yuri, better watch out, Diane Van Damme on the back. With a Lee Main Nguyen representing Cooper's crew with, with a, one, another pair of ladders. Set up in the perfect perfect position, center of the ring and reaching for the contract briefcase now. Riley the Nightmare meeting her on the top here. Gets way too distracted here, Riley pushes her down. And now the power horse of the 
natural disasters. Getting that briefcase, trying to get it for her team. Matto quickly sent to the ladder tray, uh, ladder set up on the outside. Fury power bombing Riley. Diane sending up, sent outside by likes and Rega the crowd is definitely pleased to have her back. I am definitely pleased to have her back. But, but let's see. Setting up the ladder now. Yuri and Alexia both climbing at the same time and the duo are going to be fighting up a better what's out. Diane running interference. Not enough though, but well maybe it was enough as Yuri has taken control. Pushes down Alexia and now Yuri the only woman inside uh, on top of the ladder trying to get the briefcase. Whitney collapsing the ladder and power bombs Yuri straight onto it. Diane coming in to aid Yuri out and Yuri going after Alexia meanwhile Riley the nightmare with a table on the outside and Lee May looking for a weapon she's gonna steal chair put it getting it involved in the fight now yeah absolutely brutal yeah talk about this was a very good call from the defending champions you know put everyone in a TLC fight they'll be breaking each other up so no one no one will be left or they won't be in a fighting condition by the time of next week to be uh, challenging the champions for the title. Riley setting up the ladder and now climbing there. Diane and Lee May looking very, very patiently for the opportunity to drop her down. And there she goes. Setting up here, Alexia lifting up waist lock, power bomb slam straight onto the table. We were on the ringside, Matt Doc Whitney locking up here. A headlock against the Snow Princess. Yeah, who'd have thought that uh, she would be having a problem against a dog? Well, here we go. The dedicated striker of the natural disasters. Lee Mei Nguyen going for the briefcase, but. D Diane Van Damme straight there on top pushes Lee May down and now the only woman left oh she climbs down not sure what that was about Riley getting power bombed by Alexia yeah powerhouse against power well power horse Alexia sent on over <laughs> onto the ladder Diane Van Damme still working on that briefcase here comes me the oh Riley the Nightmare just jumping off the top rope straight onto the uh, straight onto Alexia breaking the or bending the ladder in process as well I suppose it, it's equal equivalent of breaking it Yuri tried to match up with the high flying maneuver but was unable to connect Matt Doc Whitney now on the, on the briefcase trying to get it Riley the Nightmare trying to protect her or trying to keep anyone from climbing up there Snapmare take down to Diane Matt Doc Whitney looking to get the briefcase here and with that number one contender position she does it She has unhooked the briefcase We have the new number one contenders Who's gonna be going up Against The thrill seekers At the breakthrough Natural disasters Matt Doc Whitney and Riley the Nightmare now Once again winners. securing a victory Yeah, who would have thought that this opportunity would be favoring this duo? I definitely wouldn't have, but hey, they have earned it. Well, questionably, I suppose. So, so, some people could definitely be, be questioning this decision, but hey, it is as it is. As it is. What an what a, what a amazing conclusion to tonight's episode of the Pro Masters. Once again, reminding you. The Pro Masters Breakthrough Premium Show gonna be pre uh, gonna be coming to you next Sunday, 7 p.m. UTC. We still have one more show. We still have the first day show next week. Before that, we will get up the final competitors set up for it. And the uh, final, we will set the uh, one one more title match, the women's internet title match for that. But uh, we'll we'll have plenty of time to talk about that. So. Yeah, well, well, thank you for joining me as always. I've been your host, Kupari Parta. This has been Brawl Masters, and I'll see you next Thursday for some more brawling action, and next Sunday for the breakthrough. Good night.